Okay, so we've been uh, talking about BRCA metabolism and hormones and how they come together to shape cancer risk. And by now, you can see the big picture that genes load the gun, the metabolism and environment pull the trigger. Uh, and here's the empowering part. Those last two things you can influence, right? So today we're going to put together, put them together into an action plan. So let's simplify what we've covered into three overlapping circles here. So we have genes, right? So the BRCA mutations, again, BRCA, BRCA gene has nothing to do with breast. It has nothing to do with cancer. It has nothing to do with women. It's a, a gene that does DNA repair, and it also is involved in metabolism. So a BRCA mutation, which can happen in men and women, um, it weakens DNA repair and it releases the break on ACC, which then allows for ACC overactivity, which is now your metabolism circle. And that makes fat, blocks fat burning and feeds cancer cell growth. And then your environment, um, you have endocrine disruptors and lifestyle exposures that hijack hormone receptors. When these three overlap, that's where your greatest risk lies. But if we shift metabolism and clean up the environment, we can dramatically lower the danger, even if we can't change our genes. So how do we cool down that fat-making faucet, the uh, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, the ACC? Well, food choices for one, so you can cut back on refined sugars and carbs, right? And keep your, which those things keep insulin high. So you wanna monitor your insulin levels. If your insulin levels are over six, then you need to work on that. You need to get that down. So think of supplements like berberine, think of metformin, which metformin can actually um, boost AMPK. Like it's a super cheap medication um, that actually works really, really well. Uh, use healthy fats like olive oil and omega-3s to help balance lipid metabolism. Stay away from seed oils. So vegetable oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, like any seed oil, just get rid of them, canola oil, vegetable oil, uh, they need to go in the trash can. Uh, and that's the other thing that when you go out to eat, if you go out to eat a lot, just know that they're cooking with seed oils. So anything that you eat or buy outside of your house, you can assume has seed oils in it. And include plenty of colorful vegetables for antioxidants. So lifestyle, exercise is one of the most powerful ways to turn on AMPK, which is the natural break for ACC. Um, and intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating gives your metabolism a break and restores fat burning flexibility. And then targeted support. So nutrients like berberine, resveratrol, metformin, uh, which does need to be prescribed, but it can boost AMPK activity and calm down the ACC. All right, now let's talk about cleaning up the hormone environment. So avoid plastics as much as humanly possible. It's almost impossible because... Um, everything is wrapped in plastic. Your meat is wrapped in plastic. You put your vegetables in plastic, your water's in plastic. Uh, even if you didn't put it in plastic, it came in plastic in some way, shape or form. Uh, do not microwave plastic. That's just like leaching plastic into your foods and you have enough plastic in your body already. You don't need more. Uh, check your products, choose cosmetics, shampoos, lotions that are free of parabens and phthalates. Unfortunately, that makes them more expensive. Um, why we have to pay more to have no chemicals in our uh, in our personal care items is ridiculous. It's like having a tax on, um, you know, health. <laughs> so it should be cheaper to buy cosmetics and shampoos and lotions that don't have all these chemicals and, and phthalates and stuff. Um, but it's not. It's more expensive, and that's unfortunate. So food quality, buy organic whenever possible, uh, especially for food sprayed with pesticides. And I would take that one step further and say, look for regenerative farming products, especially if you can afford to go to Sprouts and buy your food there, I would absolutely do that. Um, you know, the next step would be whole foods. And if you're just, you know, eating to live at this point, then then you have to do what you have to do. But um, your, your top best types of food to buy are going to be from regenerative farms uh, across the US. Uh, and there's a lot of them that are popping up and Sprouts is, is very good about um, highlighting and supporting regenerative farming. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole show on it on Netflix, if it's still on, it's called uh, Kiss the Ground. And it's all about the soil and 
the pesticides and the glyphosates and you know all these things that they put in our food that destroy the land and blah 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 so anyway um also i want to look at your home environment uh filter your drinking water uh i found uh, after 20 years of drinking uh, water uh, my son and i both have arsenic in our blood uh, and that is all from the lovely philadelphia water supply so we do now have reverse osmosis water filtration throughout the house and not just to the drinking water in the kitchen you have to remember that water coming into the house um when you take a shower you're using that water right like and if you're if there's um, all different kinds of chemicals and, and whatnot and arsenic in your water supply and you're taking a hot shower and you're opening up the pores in the skin and that's your largest organ, that's another entry point. Okay, so even if you don't drink it, if you're just drinking filtered water from Brita in your, in your refrigerator, you have to think about all the times that you're showering as well. So those are exposures to um, a lot of chemicals. And yes, it is frustrating and it's annoying that we have to do all of this stuff. But uh, this could be uh, one of the reasons that you're not feeling well or you're, you're sick or, um, you know, the different cancers start popping up is because all of these exposures are a huge burden to the body and the body has to work really hard to get rid of them. And sometimes it just can't. So even with the cleanest lifestyle, you still have some exposure, which is detox is, is the key. And the body is designed to get rid of things um, that don't belong there, but you can help it by eating broccoli, Brussels sprouts, because that um, that really helps process estrogen and even xenoestrogens. So you can get rid of xenoestrogens in the body just by uh, having a right a good detox pathway on board. Fiber will bind to estrogen metabolites. If you don't get rid of estrogen, it just keeps recycling and recycling, and then. Um, uh, that can cause problems. You can get buildup of estrogen um, and it causes a whole different set of problems. Glutathione support through foods like asparagus, avocados, or supplements that boost like phase two detox in the liver and just something as simple as hydration and sweating. So going to the gym, hanging out in the, the infrared sauna, just move toxins out of the skin and the kidneys. So let's zoom back. Uh, the BRCA mutations, I know they, they are super scary. Uh, it feels like a genetic time bomb, but remember the mutation itself doesn't guarantee cancer. The mutation itself has nothing to do with cancer. It just creates an environment that needs more support um, so that the metabolic derangements don't turn in, don't feed uh, cancer cells from happening. So whether you have a mutation or not, the same principles apply. You need to support your metabolism, reduce exposure, and strengthen detox. You can't change your DNA, but you can absolutely change the environment in which your DNA lives. So here's my challenge to you. Pick one thing that we've talked about to start with. And maybe it's swapping out plastic water bottles for stainless steel. Maybe it's adding a daily walk so you can activate AMPK. Maybe it's eating a handful of broccoli sprouts with, uh, with uh, dinner. That would be great. So small shifts repeated over time change your metabolic environment. And that's how you take back control. So thanks for joining me in this series. And remember that the genes are part of your story, but they don't write your destiny. You do.